In the headlines, Dominica takes steps to reduce its $52 million in annual food imports. Public and private sector collaborate as Dominica evaluates its compliance with Financial Action Task Force recommendations against money laundering and terrorism financing, and OECS governments better equipped to source funds from the Green Climate Fund for disaster mitigation. I am Kenny Williams with the Channel 5 News. Details after this. First up, authorities hope U.S. $52 million in total food imports yearly can be downsized based on goals outlined in the proposed Agricultural and Food Systems Development Plan. Idona John Baptist explains. Several strategies in the plan speak to promoting food security, diversifying to non-traditional crops, and increasing production in the livestock sector. The Food and Agriculture Organization consultants working on the Agricultural and Food Systems Plan consider the area of livestock to be undeveloped. Meat accounts for 16% of the country's total food imports annually. That means Dominica imports a little over 20 million EC dollars of meat every year. Data shows that from 2003 to 2013, chicken imports have increased by 165%. Frozen chicken make up 61% of total meat imports. The national abattoir is a major step to cutting back on chicken and pork imports. Based on statistics provided by the Statistical Division in 2015, $5,122,000 in edible vegetables and certain roots and tubers were imported while it cost $1,009,000 to import foods in the category of edible fruits and nuts. FAO has also found that the food import dependence ratio, meaning the total food imports, was 55% in 2011, up from 50% in 1995. We're trying to address also the issue of the food import bill because as we know, 50% of available food in Dominica is imported. So we're trying to see what are the particular crops, what are the particular commodities that we can grow here and how we can address this issue to, in order to reduce our food imports. I can say that's like millions of US dollars. So, and even the small reduction of these food import bill could provide additional resources for Dominica. With respect to the fisheries sector, the plan indicates it will build on efforts to retool and re-educate youth on the importance and value of eating local fish in an effort to reduce the national food import bill. Idona John Baptist, Channel 5 News. The Minister for National Security says it has taken a lot of hard work to get Dominica off the Financial Action Task Force blacklist, but there is still a lot more work to be done. Minister Blackmore addressed a risk assessment and sensitization workshop on Thursday, coordinated by the Financial Intelligence Unit, which brought together heads of financial institutions and representatives of customs, police and registry. The workshop is assessing Dominica's risk and its compliance with over 40 recommendations imposed by the Financial Action Task Force. These regulations to govern the financial services sector were originally introduced following the 9-11 terrorist attacks in the United States. The intention is to ensure that local financial institutions do not become a haven for money laundering and financing of terrorism. Prior to the Labour administration, Dominica was blacklisted, but the administration has taken some policy decisions which have so far kept the country off that list. You may recall that just Upon assuming office, Dominica was blacklisted. And that was so because previous to this administration taking up office, based on a previous evaluation, there were a number of witnesses identified within our system at that time. From day one, this administration started developing the infrastructure to ensure that all the weaknesses at the time were actually addressed. Government policy decisions facilitated the establishment of the Financial Intelligence Unit in 2001. A number of new legal regimes were developed. Notable among them was the Money Laundering Prevention Act. 
a number of relevant laws were amended to in, in order to ensure that all the risks associated with money laundering were properly mitigated against. We also proceeded to develop all the requisite regulations to ensure that there was full compliance by all financial and non-financial institutions. The minister encouraged Customs, Police Registry and the FIU to work collaboratively to address the risks associated with money laundering. This exercise is meant to identify any weaknesses in our financial system and to recommend approaches to further strengthen it. The FATF blacklist is what the Financial Action Task Force used to refer to a list of non-cooperative countries or territories which it perceived to be non-cooperative in the global fight against money laundering and terrorist financing. In more news, recommendations by the Financial Action Task Force aimed at preventing money laundering and terrorism financing in countries like Dominica have been modified to suit the jurisdiction. In the past, the recommendations were the same across the board, irrespective of the jurisdiction, but coordinator of a workshop on risk assessment and sensitization says the method of implementing those recommendations has changed. Senior financial investigator at the Financial Intelligence Unit, FIU, says Dominica has come a long way in terms of its compliance with the technical requirements as recommended by the FATF. One of those requirements is the National Risk Assessment. Each jurisdiction must have a full appreciation and understanding of the money laundering and terrorism financing risks that are endemic to that jurisdiction. So what, what obtains, what applies to us is not the same that applies to Syria, is not the same that applies to Russia. So they, they would like every jurisdiction to do an, an assessment of the money laundering risk, money laundering and terrorism financing risk that the jurisdiction is exposed to. And from that, at the end of the assessment, um, the jurisdiction is then required to come up with, with measures, um, to implement measures to get at mitigating the risk that has been identified. Previously, only public officers participated in the working groups, but the FATF has asked that all key stakeholders are involved in this process, and that includes both private and public sector representatives. So all the, the, the persons who are members of the, the various working groups um, will be provided with all the technical material um, to assist in the, in the assessment of the jurisdiction. So at the end of the, the national risk assessment, what will be done, a report will be generated, and that report will then be used by members, by yourselves, for, um, to assist in the conduct of your own institutional risk assessment. So we are adopting this top-down approach where we set the standards um, in terms of identifying the money laundering and terrorism financing risk that the jurisdiction faces or is exposed to, and then we are filtering down this report to the various financial institutions and asking them to use the information contained therein to inform their own internal um, risk assessments. The Dominica Employers Federation awaits action on a proposal made to the Office of the Prime Minister to strike off making work on Sunday illegal. The law basically declares Sunday a public holiday and outlaws business transactions on a Sunday. Even if it's not being enforced, executive director of the Employers Federation says it's not in line with a 21st century economy. Ashil Joseph says if the country wants to move to become a 24-7, 365-day economy, that law has to change. Recently, we have sent a bill to the Prime Minister. Traditionally, the Employers Federation would make representations, we would send recommendations, but this time we take it up a bit further. We put all our recommendations in the form of a parliamentary bill. And we have sent it to the Prime Minister, it's going on two months right now, on changing the way our economy works from what it is right now to one that will create more employment, one that will have more economic activity and lift some of the burden that are created by some of the public holidays in this country. The expectation is that the economy will expand in areas where the restrictions exist. One of the ways Joseph sees that happening is in the provision of work. Currently, every business that is transacted on Sunday is done illegally. There's a law in this country that says a woman should not work beyond 10 p.m. We're asking for that to be lifted. We're also asking for the harmonization of the minimum age for work. 
in Dominica right now, we have several minimum ages. We have 15, we have 16, we have 18, and self-employment under the Dominica Social Security Act is 14. We're asking for a harmonization, and we're also asking to lift the restriction on Sunday trading in Dominica. Look at the, 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 the call centers going on very late. We have people working in the, in the hotel industry, some of them shut down at 11. It has been flouted because there is a demand for women working beyond those hours. It's just like the business is opening on Sunday. The businesses are not open on Sunday because they, they decide, let me open on Sunday. Patrons are demanding that they want to be able to shop almost 24 hours a day right now. The hierarchy of the DEF is aware that their proposal has been received and is optimistic that a response will come soon. We were hoping to see some traction even before uh, the national budget comes up. We're not asking for it to be implemented before the national budget, but we're hoping that some statement about that could be made in the Prime Minister's presentation on the national budget, but we've not heard from them yet. But we are hopeful that that will lead us to some sort of discussion. We know there's a law revision process in, in place right now under Mr. Ray Harris. We are hoping that that could be taken on board. Coming up, Orion Academy retains the Junior Tourism Minister title. Welcome back. Regional environmental authorities are better empowered on how they can strategize to obtain funding from the Green Climate Fund for Disaster Mitigation. A two-day meeting of OECS Ministers for Environmental Sustainability wrapped up here on Thursday, exploring opportunities which will arm OECS governments at sourcing funds was part of their discussions. Governments have their eyes set on the Green Climate Fund, which supports climate resilient projects. The fund has identified five investment priorities, including enhancing resilience in small island developing states like Dominica. And Dominica is putting itself in the fast lane as it pursues climate change mitigation measures. The government has also adopted the Low Carbon Climate Resilient Development Strategy in 2012-2020, which outlines sectoral and national interventions to mitigate and adapt to the inevitable effects of climate change that will create employment by diversifying and growing our economy. By 2014, with the lead of the Environmental Coordinating Unit, the Commonwealth of Dominica have drafted the Climate Change Environment and Development Bill, a cutting-edge legal institutional framework which will position Dominica to gain improved access to international climate financing, particularly from the Green Climate Fund. The University of the West Indies Open Campus, Dominica, is playing its role in helping the country employ smart agricultural practices. This is the aim of a country conference scheduled for 19th and 20th May. The conference is being held under the theme, Food for Thought, ensuring sustainability through food and nutrition security and resilience in the nature aisle. The significant reduction in agricultural output in the last 25 years coupled with the increase in the country's food import bill, which currently stands at over $100 million, as well as infestations of pests and diseases, have significantly dampened plans for reaching our targets and have adversely affected every sector of the country, from health to environment to social services. It is important to note that if this situation continues in Dominica, the country's food supply, the health of its people, and its hope of national development will be severely compromised in less than 10 years. The country conference forms part of UE's outreach mandate and involves the institution choosing a topic or theme and allowing researchers to submit material on it. Almost 30 researchers responded to our call for papers requesting work related to the various aspects of our theme. That is the most successful call for papers of any of the country conferences of the Open Campus sites. After much deliberation, our planning committee chose 22 of these papers to be part of our country conference. These papers come from Dominica's people, its friends and well-wishers, whose contribution will form part of seven panels in the two-day event. The Dominica Country Conference will seek to provide a forum, not only for the presentation of research, but for discussion and for future action. This is the first country conference organized by the UE Open Campus Dominica site. 
Several sponsors have come on board to make this event possible, including the National Development Foundation of Dominica, Banana Company in Measures, and the Aid Bank. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. On to the Orion Academy, where they have once again won the title of Junior Tourism Minister. This, as Benjamin Lear emerged victorious at Thursday's Youth Tourism Congress organized by the Discover Dominica Authority. In 2015, Benjamin's sister, Emma, won the Junior Tourism Minister title for the Orion Academy. It feels good to know that I can live up to my sister's very, very large footsteps. I was really nervous. What was it like preparing for the Congress? It, it was tiring. Like, there was a lot of work involved. I think that a lot of the projects that were presented here should be put into place, not just mine. And working towards that is, would be my first goal. The Youth Tourism Congress forms part of activities for Tourism Awareness Month, which is recognized in May. Lair will go on to represent Dominica at the Caribbean Tourism Organization's Regional Tourism Youth Congress in Barbados in September. The format was similar to the one that the CTO organizes. You have a general, there are three questions. Students have to prepare one question each, and then there is a mystery round where they get to present on a question that they have not seen or heard before. So it really is to encourage them to develop their public speaking skills and thinking on their feet. We see it as a way of involving the youth in tourism and get, letting them uh, in, improve on their rich research skills and finding out more about the industry. And they can also present new ideas that we can use in our own marketing of the destination. The Congress organized for students aged 14 to 17 had nine participants this year. Elena Benjamin of the Wesley High School came in second runner-up and Elaine Commodore of the Convent High School placed first runner-up. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. Chit Chat segment, next. Okay, we're here with Nali Bertrand, the owner of Bunny's Cakes and Catering, and I'm sure you have some exciting news to share with us. Just tell us what you have in, in, in store. Well, very exciting news for Dominica indeed. As you know, Sunday is Mother's Day mm -hmm. and Bunny's Cakes and Catering has a special offer to the mothers in Dominica, Kenny. Okay. So this Mother's Day, customers can enjoy 10% discount right. if they order by Friday. Uh -huh. If they come on Saturday, they get 5% discount and they can enjoy a wide variety of cakes. We have strawberry, we have fruit cake, we have cheesecake, the best cheesecake in Dominica. <laughs> we have uh, the best chocolate cake as well. Oh, yeah. Just a wide variety of flavors, Kenny. Nice, nice. We also want to let our customers know that we'll be open from 8 in the morning mm -hmm. on Friday to 8 in the evening on Friday as well as Saturday. So we're giving our customers ample time to come in and make their order. As you know, Bunny's Cakes and Catering, it's all about love. Everything is made with love and made from scratch. Yeah. Our cakes are made from scratch. Our icing is made from scratch. All right, talk to us about you know the free sampling that's happening on Friday. Yes, free sampling on, on Fridays while stocks last. So make sure you come in and taste the moist, delicious cakes available at Bunny's Cakes and Catering. And of course, we are very close to mapping on Kings Lane. So our customers, like the, our mapping customers, you know yourselves, you can come in. Hi, Kendra. All hello right. to Julian Morris. Yes, we're just going to wrap this up real quick. So just check out Bunny's on 8 Kings Lane, Roseau. Call 448 your sports highlights, next. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. First up in sports. Various sporting individuals and groups were recognized at the 10th Annual National Sports Award Ceremony Wednesday night for their achievements in 2015. Topping those awards were the coveted titles of Sportsman and Woman of the Year. Those chosen for the titles each received $3,000, compliments Government of Dominica, PDF Caribbean Dominica Limited, and Dominica National Lotteries Commission. They also received handsets, compliments Flo, a night for two at Fort Young Hotel, and gift baskets from Springfield Trading Limited. Tyron Teofield won the male sports personality for his performance in cricket. Teofield was chosen over 2016 Olympic qualifier and national triple jumper Yodanis Garcia, as well as national footballer Randolph Peltier. 
The sportsman of the year racked up 700 runs in the regional season and had the second highest aggregate by a batsman in 2015. The female sports personality of the year went to Shani Angol for her performance in track and field. Angol contended with netballer Chanel St. Rose and Alija Tit for performances in football. Well, I'm overwhelmed that I got this award. I've worked hard for it for the past years. But now that I've got it, I'm feeling proud of myself. I didn't feel like I was going to get it because I've been trying to get it for the, for the past three years. So this is a surprise for me. What's next is just more trading, hard work. I'm, I'll, I am planning to represent Dominica in the next Olympics. Meantime, the other awardees for 2015 are as follows. Special Olympics, Claudius Shipley. Groundsman, Isaac Andre. Primary school sports teacher, Dario Frank. Secondary school sports teacher, Lisa James. Primary school, W.S. Stevens. Secondary school, Northeast Comprehensive. Sports reporter, Gavin Richards. Umpire, Lennox Abraham. Coach, Mervyn Thomas. Club, Exodus Football Club. Sports Committee, Kalinago Sports Committee with a $500 check from the Minister for Sports. Sponsor, Big Edge Financial Express. Association, Dominica Football Association. Female Youth Athlete, Aliyah Prince with a $500 check from the Minister for Sports. And Male Youth Athlete, Alec Athanas, also with a $500 check from the Minister for Sports. A special recognition award was given to Oswald Savre for his contribution to the sports awards over the years. MVP awards were also given for athletics, basketball, boxing, bridge, cricket, domino, football, netball, rounders, softball cricket, table tennis, tennis, and volleyball. Still in sports, Sports Minister Justina Charles says maintenance of the stadium is of much concern since many organizations benefit from its use. Her comments come at an over $404,000 roof repair signing at the stadium. The most important for us now is to ensure that it is maintained for, in an order that it can be appealing to the international world for international matches and other such, such activities. So our maintenance plan is one of the things that we have to revisit very, very often. And as a result of that, the stadium board and the manager has as a responsibility to ensure that they can review the look at the, at the facility and <clears throat> draw to our attention the need for any repairs <clears throat> to be done. And so we have a maintenance plan to ensure that we can keep this facility at a standard that is appealing to all. Charles says local electricians and plumbers should benefit from the repair works done at the stadium. The Ministry of Sports has also engaged the Chinese um, technical team in transferring some of their skills to our young technicians in Dominica. And so we had some training session with the technical team, with our young electricians and plumbers in Dominica in the event that the team would have to um, recall their services or at one time we expect them to leave so there can be continuity for the development and maintenance of the facility. The contract was signed between the government of Dominica and Fortify Construction. On to football now where the match between Calibishi and Boston Warner ended prematurely in the 40th minute of play in the All-Island League on Wednesday. Scores at the time were 2 all. The DFA awaits the referee's report. Meantime, at the Poria playing field, Pitit Savan Dream Team failed to show up for their match against Ray Charles Point Michel. The league continues on Friday between Delton United and Dallas at Newtown playing field at 5 p.m. On the cricket scene, Rising Pune Super Giants defeated Delhi Daredevils by seven wickets in the 33rd match of the 2016 Indian Premier League on Thursday. Daily Daredevils batted first and scored 162 for 7, with JP Domini adding 34 and Kuran Nair 32. Super Giants in reply scored 166 for 3. A. Rahain scored 63 not out, while W.S. Kawaja chipped in with 30. That's all the time for sports. Join us next time. Your weather report is next.
Good evening, viewers. Welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I am Janelle McPherson. We can stable conditions today resulted in low-level clouds across the region. Visible satellite imagery showed partly cloudy to cloudy skies across Dominica today. Radar imagery indicated some spotty showers across the region. The weather for tonight, partly cloudy with brief showers. Similar conditions can be expected tomorrow. Seas tomorrow, slight to moderate in open water, waves peaking up to 5 feet. Looking ahead, Friday and Saturday, a high pressure system will result in partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy skies and brief showers. By Sunday, a trough system will generate mostly cloudy skies and showers. Throughout the Caribbean tomorrow, a high pressure system will result in partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some brief showers. On the International Cities forecast, mostly cloudy skies with rain in New York, generally fair weather conditions in Miami, London, Caracas and Beijing. Sunrise tomorrow at 5.39 a.m. and the sunset at 6.25 p.m. For up-to-date weather information, please visit our website at weather.gov.dm or call our weather hotline at 447-5555. Thank you for viewing and have a good night. To end the news, the headlines once again. Dominica takes steps to reduce its $52 million in annual food imports. Public and private sector collaborate as Dominica evaluates its compliance with Financial Action Task Force recommendations against money laundering and terrorism financing and OECS governments better equipped to source funds from the Green Climate Fund for Disaster Mitigation. Feel free to contact us at newsandmapping2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube page. On behalf of the production team, I am Kenny Williams. To our viewers around the world, thanks for watching. Join us tomorrow.